Welcome to the next video in the series. Now this one's about converting free EPS files to transparent SVG files in Affinity Designer. This allows you to group those difficult vectors really easily. Now this is a common theme I see on the, on the um, Facebook pages and things like that where people have EPS files that have a white background and it's really easy to transfer them to SVG files with a transparent background. Now some of the EPS files they simply have a coloured layer like a white layer and you can just disable that and I'll show you that at the end and that gives you the transparency. But some of them don't. Because EPS which is encapsulated postscript um, is made the way it is, quite often when you make an EPS it has a white background by default. So let's see how we do this. Sourcing the vector files, now creating usable content using Affinity Designer requires you either draw your own or source them from somewhere else. Now a few of the places we've got VectEasy, V-E-C-T-E-E-Z-Y, Vect, Vector, VectEasy, yeah it's difficult to say. It's a great location for vector EPS and SVG images and lots of them are free. There's the depositphotos.com. Now there's a reference on there. If you click on that, you'll probably find um, that it's a, it's a reference from my affiliate link. So just be aware of that. If I make a few pennies out of that, good. If I don't, it doesn't matter. Now, to easily create transparent images from those white background EPS groups, patterns can be converted, converted to transparent background vector images, modified with Affinity Designer and used in our projects with Affinity Publisher or Designer or Photo. So let's have a look at some. Now there's some EPS images from Deposit Photo. Now you'll notice down the right hand side there that it says vector EPS. It doesn't come in an SVG file. And be aware some images come with an SVG file when you download them. You're usually in a little zip file. Some images come with an EPS file, some come with SVG, some come with PDF. Now this particular example is talking about transferring an EPS to an SVG. SVG is much easier to work with. Now this is one I've got from VectEasy. It's a free file um, and you can see the attribution in the, in the white bar in the orange panel at the top. If you use the images from, well from any source really, make sure you put that attribution somewhere in your project. Click on the image and it will count down to the download. Now on VectorEasy it counts 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 and then downloads. Um, you can subscribe to them and if you use a lot of vectors and images that's a good idea. 123rf.com is another one. Now this vector you can see is also small, medium or EPS which is any size. Now I've downloaded the EPS and we'll have a look at that later. It's just what we want. It's an EPS file that demonstrates another option. So. Let's have a look at our animal, vector animal cartoon sets. And you can see there, there's a PNG file. The top one is the EPS file. It doesn't display on the iPad, but uh, that's all right. And a bit of information. So we're going to open the EPS file. And you can forget the others for now. Don't bother with the PNG file. That's just to show you how it works. Now the EPS file is opened in Designer. So open Designer and locate and add the EPS file. You can see this one is one group of dozens of vectors and curves it, and it has a brown background and we can remove that. So you can see on the right hand side there's the top layer which shows you the entire image but below that are all those curves. Now this is one of my complaints if you like about Designer. It has this really dark interface to it and it's really difficult to read. So there's nothing we can do about that so we'll just live with that for the moment. Now we've removed the brown background which was a layer. Now it's a layer right down the bottom there somewhere. No I've got, I haven't shown it on there. It doesn't matter. 
It's simply been deselected in the layers panel. It doesn't remove the EPS white background, which is a default for that file type. There is no white background showing on there. It's an EPS file and it's been saved not with a transparent background, but the default white background. We're going to get rid of that. And we're also going to make an SVG file, which is easier to work with. Now, export your file to type SVG as shown. No changes, just name and save location. And the whole document, it's still untitled.svg there, but you could call it My Animals. I forget what I actually called it. We'll have a look. There we go, cartoonanimals.svg, and I saved it. Saved it in the same directory that the zip file um, opened it in. Okay, saved as cartoonanimals.svg. Now, load it back into Designer, and when you open the cartoonanimals.svg, presto, transparent background which is just what we want. Now the next step we're going to isolate all of these groups. We don't want one long list of, of layers. You know how difficult it is to find them in that. So pull out a rectangle over the line. Now I'm using a pencil on the iPad here, an Apple pencil, but if you've got delicate little fingers it's just as good. So drag out, this is not an object mind you, so don't drag out a rectangle object. You just want to put your finger on the top left hand corner and drag out that transparent rectangle so it covers the entire object. This actually selects all the elements in that image. And if you look carefully there, you'll see on this dark interface that the line is selected and all of the layers that make up the line are also selected. All the elements of that image are selected. Now group those elements. You know how to group them. In, right at the top of that panel there's one to the third icon in. Looks like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Tap on that and it groups all the elements. And this makes each image very easy to deal with. You could rename that from group to lion. Makes it so you know exactly what you're dealing with. Same with the crocodile. Drag it out, select it all, and group it. Same with the elephant. Drag it out, group it, and rename it of course. Too easy. Now, you can easily move elements around so you can select and group the remaining animals. But be careful, some vector elements or curves will be misplaced in the layer. You might try and drag the image and it leaves one element behind. Okay, just take it back, go back one step with the undo arrow. You've still got all of the elements selected because the item you've, you've pulled out your selection on has them all highlighted but there's one missing. So you scroll down the list of curves until you find it and then add them to the selection simply by dragging left. It won't unselect all the other ones if you do that. On the layer that you want, drag left and the layer will be selected. I know that doesn't make sense but when you see it happen you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Now I've got a red arrow pointing at the, hmm, I guess it's a, a lion or a cat or something there, and it's got a slightly yellow face, creamy yellow face. When that's all selected and you try and drag it across, the face was left behind. The face part was actually about 10 layers down in that big list, and I had to select it, I had to find it, drag left to select it so it was part of the entire selection. Then when you group it, it puts them all in the group. You might need to experiment with that to get it right. It takes a little while to find it sometimes. 
Another example, load the EPS and export it as an SVG. Now you can see there everything's got a white background. The whole lot. Load it in and export it as an SVG. Very simple. And there it is with transparent background. So have fun with your new SVG files. No more pesky white or coloured backgrounds. No more struggling with hundreds of layers all mixed up. So you can remove, save it as an SVG, load the SVG file back in and abandon the EPS file. Probably keep it somewhere in an archive. Now here's a slightly different example just to prove that nothing stays the same. This is an EPS file and it's one from 123rf.com but it's different. Each of those little black figures is a separate um, vector curve and as you can see it's got a white background. There's all the layers expanded and down the bottom you can see one, two, three, four rectangles, the big square couple of side rectangles. Now to show you how that works, I've unselected them so they no longer show and there behind everything is a transparent background. So you can export it as a CSVG with the background layers unchecked and you can do it. You don't need to group those because each individual curve is actually one of those figures. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it.